Yes, we finally reached this time. You know what time it is? Let's get to it! <laughs> it's a statement, it's a way of life. So The Mr. Jason talking. <laughs> <laughs> now, we might have been in the bedtime story era, but the material girl was keeping her foot on them folks' throat. She said, I am her, I am him, I am them. And she slayed and ate and left no crumbs. I feel like during this era, the fashion was just delish. Girl, girl giving Jean Harlow tea. Girl giving Lady Godiva tea. Coming up with the sunflower tea. Like, look at this. Old Hollywood meets woman of the 90s. Yes, look at this. Fall down those steps, right? <laughs> Definitely eating. She was giving Demira teas. <laughs> Demira the 90s, okay? The girl was eating. Ate. Left no crumbs with the poodle, right? We did chilling on the beach. Yes, she ate in ponytails. Ah, delish, delish, delish. Now, I don't want to use the word glow up, but the fashion was eating. <laughs> I'm not telling y'all nothing y'all don't already know. Y'all been fans since before I was even born. Y'all lived it. But here, here's my take. Basically, Madonna was like, I'm going to literally sell sex. And she did. In the book, right? The coffee table book. Boom. She made some money. But then she also, the album was not necessarily that much sex driven, but erotic of the video. Bandita said enough, right? So it's like. And then, not only that, from what I understand, I hadn't seen the movies of that era, but the movies also heavily revolved around, like, sex crazed characters, right? So, it was just too much sex, which caused Madonna to face too much backlash. Backlash like she's never faced before. Because the thing that Madonna did so very well in her career was the songs may not necessarily have been sexually, sexually explicit, but she could do that with imagery in the videos. Erotica, I mean, some of the songs wasn't really that sexually explicit, honestly. But Erotica, Dita, the sex book, it was just already a done deal to the point where there was no blur between Madonna, the brand, Madonna, the actress, Madonna, the artist. Right? It was just all just too much. It seemed to be right for the American public, especially. But hey, even overseas, they say she was going too far, right? So, <laughs> so with that being said, we see my girl, she was fatigued, doing the interviews, right? A little kind of hostile because people wasn't really feeling it. So, first time we started seeing her crack smiles was really on the, um, what's the disco tour? The girly show tour, okay? <laughs> so, they say in attempts to soften her image, right? Madonna, here she goes, comes with this bedtime story. Number one, brilliant album name, right? <laughs> Number two, brilliant album cover. Um, very soft, nice colors. Um, but even it had its own controversy, right? Y'all was telling me there was the album that was that was really released for her being upside down, but we get the upside or the right side up image, right? <laughs> Pressed on the CDs, or whatever. In my opinion, I've said this in some of the videos I reacted to before. Um, I felt like Madonna strategically was like, okay, wait a minute, boom. I'm not getting too much love in the pop space prior to releasing Erotica. Prior to releasing erotica right madonna could do no wrong it seemed right she could say whatever she wanted to say back and could say whatever they want to say about her she like f y'all she cursing on tv right she just she I, i'm madonna y'all can't touch me but madonna got a little humble so she got a little humble like dang wait a minute wait a minute because for as much as madonna is an artist she is just as much if not more businesswoman so think about her having this Basically, 10-year career of always climbing, 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 climbing. And then she gets to the point where, wait a minute, Erotica, it ain't sell as many albums as the Immaculate Collection. What's going on? 
know. <laughs> that has to be alarming. That has to be scary. And so what she decided to do, what I feel like, is she did what a black celebrity would do when they get in trouble, right? Anytime a black celebrity get in trouble, and let's say we ain't seen them in a long time at no black events, right? They start showing up at black spaces again, right? Because they need to come back home, come back to the people that made them, right? So I feel like bedtime story was Madonna doing just that, right? So granted, she had had success with uh, the safe, I remember. But one thing about Madonna's whole career is she's Madonna has always had that balance of safe, controversy safe controversy erotica was the first time there was no safe right? except with rain and rain was released too late if rain was maybe the first single which i thought it should be off erotica then perhaps maybe things would have went different that era but either way boom madonna came back home to the black and brown folks who made her in the clubs on the 83 album right boom so we have Bedtime Stories It's the most urban sounding album that Madonna has had since her first album, 1983, right? So it's almost literally 10 years different. Um, the first time we actually see Madonna actually using urban um, scenery again as well. We hadn't seen that really since, again, that first album, right? <laughs> so... Again, Madonna came back home. And now, not not to mention that as well, but we also, I understand during this time, the rise of hip-hop, right? Rap is now becoming, now I don't want to say the preferred German just yet, like it is today, but it's getting up there. And then R&B was still very alive, very strong during this period of time, right? So, boom, we have Madonna. She linked up with hot producers, Babyface, Dallas Austin. Uh, what's that dude name? Uh, Jam Hall, Davis, something like that, right? And then she go over to the UK, hook up with Nelly Hopper. Boom. Okay. So what we have here is this pop R&B album. And let's talk about it. <laughs> then before we start talking about it, Madonna was also getting some of that. But Madonna was also messing around with a, a lot of black men at this time, right? That cannot be disputed. So <laughs> with that being said, I, I, the flavor just was giving, okay? So, anyway, uh, y'all know how I like to do. I like to rate the videos first, and then we'll go into the tracks. It's the opposite of how I do things, but either way. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, with Erotica, we saw four single releases. Well, let's talk about my rankings for the videos. So, Bedtime Story. Out of all the videos, this would be my least favorite of them all. Not saying that it was a bad video. It was brilliant with what the song was encompassing but it's just not a Madonna video I want to see over and over again if that makes sense right so uh just go beat number four for me oh love the swag love the look love the the look of the video right the feel of the video but I feel like the other two videos are just a little bit better so for that reason secret comes in at number three <laughs> beautifully shot video right we saw the behind the scenes on location how long it took them to shoot these things a time period piece Madonna looked fabulous great y'all said it was her auditioning for um Ibiza. don't cry for me Argentina right right so <laughs> again not bad video at all but it's just not number one for me <laughs> oh my god so I actually reacted to this video before I think I even started the Madonna journey. And I just loved it instantly. The album track songs, all right? So again, we're gonna do this from top to bottom, my least favorite to my favorite song. Here we go. <laughs> again, this was so disappointing to me. I didn't know it was baby face on the track, Forbidden Love. If it was one song that could have been left off the album, I think it was this one, right? Like, could be used as a teaser for, like, a, a promo like I used to do back in the day with, like, uh, Desperate Housewives or something. But, mm -mm. I I just wasn't feeling babyface vocals at all. The song kind of dragged for me, right? And really, I don't even remember the verses. I just remember that part. <laughs> so, for that reason, number 11, Forbidden Love. Honestly, I feel like these songs... 
kind of bleed together um, in that sanctuary. My sanctuary. Um, I felt like a little better than for being in love, um, but it's still a little kind of boring for me at some point. Points. I think it was a little bit too long. I think I remember I said that. And yeah, I mean, album filler for sure. Now, this shouldn't come as a surprise. Some of y'all probably thought I was going to rate this one number 11. But it's bedtime story. Um, Let's get unconscious. I feel like the more I heard that song, whether I heard Sing It Live or like the remix, the remix, which I think was better, it kind of wore me just a little bit. But the song just wasn't commercial friendly I don't feel like it I think that was proved and how it charted yeah it was it was it was weird but I think that's what it was intended to be like it was intended to be like weird and giving something like what is this yeah <laughs> so I think Madonna wanted people to scratch their heads with the song in the video but yeah definitely not something I added to the playlist not at all <laughs> don't stop doing what you're doing baby this song wasn't necessarily bad. Again, I mentioned, I think it had that lazy mid-tempo, mid-90s, that kind of money, kind of beat to it. Um, but I think it could have been a single. Um, I think this had more charting potential than Bedtime Stories did. Not one which I added to the playlist either. All right, next. Okay, so this song... Um, had its own set of controversy, right? So you had originally Tupac, very controversial artist figure on the song um, originally, but y'all say he had some charges going on. So Madonna um, label made the best decision to drop him. But not only that, it seems like him and Madonna maybe was having some relationship troubles as well. So with that, she gets, um, what's her name, Michelle? I, I forgot how to pronounce her last name, but her artist, off the Maverick label, All right? So she playing that funky that bass, right? Um, but this song, I feel like if there was any song that Madonna wanted y'all to know, like, whoa, like I'm, I'm getting in. Um, uh, I think it was I'd rather be your lover, right? It was the um, uh, well, what she was saying is that, but. Uh, the mmms, <laughs> the mmms going hard. Um, yeah, I definitely think we're done. One to let y'all know. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, yeah, it's getting laid down over here. I'm good. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not a bad song. I think if Tupac was kept on, I think it could have been a single. But some of y'all were like in the landscape of '94, maybe not. Um, again, I'm coming from entirely different generation not even hindsight right i'm just coming from a different generation looking in on what happened from the past so y'all some of y'all let me know like nah this still wouldn't work even in that era so now a lot of y'all surprisingly was hating on this song i had no idea <laughs> that this song would get some low-key hate some of y'all was like uh like this song is like i feel like a great divide some of y'all was like this song nah garbage trash ew Get up out of here with that. Other ones are like, me. I was like, I felt this. Like, I felt this message, right? Mom tried to welcome me. Hey, hey, hey. But my soul you back. <laughs> I like, I, I love the lyrics. I felt like the song, it was relatable. Like, if you've been in this situation where you, maybe you just too toxic or maybe you just too damaged, whatever it is. Love can try to welcome people, but people just don't know how to receive it. Um, and then also, I feel like this was kind of one of those songs where Madonna is explaining herself, right? Subtly, right? So without apologizing for the Rodica era, right? Without wanting to make it seem like, you know, she had some regrets about it, which she talked a little about in some interviews, right? Um... I feel like this is one of those attempts, just even with, and, and again, I feel like Madonna throughout her career has been very cheeky with uh, song titles, but even more in the 90s, right? Like, Erotica was the first album where I was like, wow, bad girl, that's a title? Madonna, really? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, 
know her reputation. She would have a song, Bad Girl. Hmm. And then with this love tried to welcome me. I just feel like it was her way of sending a message about herself uh, to the public again, the softer side of Madonna. Um, yeah, but again, I like the song. So human nature was basically like the F y'all, right? Like I did it my way. <laughs> I had no regrets, right? Like she said. Uh, did I say something wrong? Oops, I didn't know we couldn't talk about sex. What was I thinking? You know what I mean? Like Madonna was snapping on the track, talking about the error for sure. Um, and I mean, I also just love her kind of freedom of speech stance that she took on this song. And it's like, I'm not going to want the problem. Y'all are the problem because we often know, oftentimes when people are highly critical of things, they have their own, what do you want to call them, demons that they're working through, right? So either way, I, I do uh, love the Madonna spirit as well of, you know, standing up for her work, standing up for herself. Um, But was smart enough to know, okay, let me not make a whole album where I'm like, F y'all, right? Let, let me just do one song, one song. <laughs> All right, next. Top four is what is giving uh, this song. So again, I just said Madonna with like the album, the song titles, right? Inside of me, suggestive. But when you listen to the song, very beautiful, sweet song. Um, at first, I was kind of like, well, is she talking about a guy? But then later on, you guys would reveal she's talking about her mom. And, you know, when the world's trying to break me down. <laughs> right? And foolish people try to bring me down. I just think of your smiling face and I'm flying. All right. So again, but done to be vulnerable. Um, talking about, you know, people coming at her and she's maybe not as strong as people think. Uh, she has her moments of, you know, vulnerability. She's weak, but in those vulnerable moments, she's looking, you know, that looking to or looking for the, the love her mother gave her, right? It's inside of me, even though you're gone. Life still carries on. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it was just so smooth and, and soft, right? I instantly liked it for its softness. Not even the lyrical content, but just the... Like, you could just clean up on the Sunday, right? <laughs> With that type of song. I keep a picture of you, hey. I miss do my bed at night. Right, we we in there, we in there. Inside of me, definitely firebox for sure. It's on the playlist. All right, that top three. <laughs> All right, so this was hard, honestly. Um, and I had to think about some things. Right, like, hmm, what's on the playlist? What's the song you revisit most? What does history tell us, right? So, number three. Might come to a surprise for some of you guys, but I think this song is very pivotal. pivotal. I think this song is a very pivotal song in Madonna's entire catalog, honestly. Um, it's a, it embodies the qualities of her that I was drawn to from the beginning of this journey, right? And I recognized her strength and her willingness to survive right like i've always compared madonna right to that scene of mommy dearest right when babe ran down the street and survive, survive, survive. and i didn't even know it was a song right it's a bible um but that is what madonna always is giving me that kind of energy right like the phoenix that rises she's gonna get up again and um again i feel like number one opening track um, sending a message, survival, right? Like she, she said, like, I'll never be an angel. I'll never be a saint. It's true. Hey, I'm too busy surviving. Like if you live life and you've been through your share of ups and downs, right? Of trials and tribulations. I feel like you can understand this song survival because that's what it's all about. Survival. Like he all just trying to survive, and Madonna is basically saying, you know, I did what I had to do. <laughs> <laughs> top two, top two. 
Woo. Now, this this is very tough for me, y'all. This is very tough for me, choosing between these two songs. And again, just thinking about like my criteria. Songs I come back to, right? And uh, this song right here, it slaps so much, right? So this song instantly had me with that. What's the one? That that the, the opening guitar. Dun, 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 dun. It's so moody. Madonna humming, got that barber story said that. Something's coming over. Hey, something's coming over. Like, what's going on? What's coming on? My baby's got a secret. Deep lines, like, happiness lies in your own hands. Like, what pop song is giving me that kind of realness on the track? Right? It took me much to understand. Right? How it could be. <laughs> like, it is a deep pop song, right? Again, Secret, Madonna kind of being cheeky with the uh, song titles. And um, I just think, again, such a great song. Um, I feel like it is very, very contemporary, right? It was um, Dallas produced this. So Dallas did a great job of just making this uh, funky, right? It had that funky aspect as well. That like it was real funky too, and Madonna just came through. Uh, vocals was just giving the whole track, and um, yeah, I, I liked it. And and again, this was the lead single, right? Secret. I think this was a good lead single for this album because it sounds so different from anything in Madonna's catalog up until this point. Um, and it's just such a great song from start to finish, right? Like, I'm here for it. My baby's got a secret. <laughs> All right, time for song one. Are you slow or not? I think you probably got what number one is at this point. Uh, the number one song for me, I think the public agreed, right? That my Donna's highest charting song ever, right? I think y'all told me that. Yeah, and it shows. It's so good. It's take a bow, right? <laughs> like, take a bow. I mean, this song, it is classic, timeless, right? Um, and I just mentioned, like, Secret Sounds Like Nothing in Madonna's catalog. Neither does this song. But this song is like, it did what I say True Blue and Cherish was laying the ground for it, right? It was that kind of generational bop, right? All generations could like, listen to, and recognize. You might hear the expression, that's a nice song, right? <laughs> like, it, it, it just does that. And the sound, and also the imagery. And um, I just feel like, y'all say Madonna is about to start getting vocal lessons. Um, for Vita, I feel like that already was happening with this album, right? Because Take a Bow is, I feel like the the student has now graduated from Angel when we come to talk about that lower register, right? Right? Because Angel, for those of y'all who've been rocking with me since the beginning, Angel was the first time on record we heard that that lower register. I believe in Dreams come true, right? And you must be an angel. <laughs> My girl was getting down there, right? Okay. But take a bow. What take a bow is, it's totally Lord Register, right? Take a bow. <laughs> and it, it was just so beautiful to hear because it's like, wow. My girl, then that voice then, then leveled up, right? <laughs> but... What's also interesting, though, about this particular album, I feel like um, Madonna just not only was it the vocal lessons, but I think also just been around Nikki and Donna, um, touring with them, what, for three tours, was forcing Madonna to become a, what would I call it? like maybe, I don't necessarily say a better vocalist, but a stronger vocalist, right? Um... Because I think there's trade-offs 
And I feel like I kind of heard a little bit with this album. Some of that kind of natural, raw emotion from Madonna was really kind of gone. Except like, I'd rather be your love. We heard those, mm-hmm, right? Those, <laughs> but other than that, all the rest of these songs are really just smooth, honestly. Beautiful song, right? Uh, of this love that's been taken for granted. And I feel like, you know, in life, you have those relationships where you wonder, uh, am I being played, right? Am I being a fool? And you know this person knows, right, the level of control they might have over you just based off your emotions, right? I've always been in love with you. You've always known it's true. (laughs) You took my love for granted. Oh, I shout out to Babyface too because I mean, of course, the song wouldn't be but the same or wouldn't hit the same without his vocals as well. It was just a nice, really, I want to say a duet, right? Um, but he was backing her, and it was just excellent, beautiful song, beautiful production. He could bow like move Madonna over into like adult contemporary, like officially, like okay, Madonna grown now, <laughs> like. She ain't one of the, she ain't one of the children coming up no more. You know what I mean? Like she's been doing this. She's an established artist, respectable. And I think it's a crime. Take about, I feel like should have gotten a Grammy, if not Song of the Year. Uh, I don't know what other songs came out that same year, but this song was fire. I felt like Madonna should at least got a Grammy for it. But anyway, hey, what do I know? I'm just Empress on this journey. Okay, y'all with me. <laughs> All right, now y'all know what time it is. It is time for the last little part of this. We got to do the album listings. All right, so let's see. Where does that time story fit? All right, so now let's get into the Madonna album. So, so far I've heard eight albums, we could say, right, that basically have been Madonna-centric, whether it be soundtracks that were like basically completely her songs mostly her songs um or just studio albums all right so right now the album that's not giving haven't re-listened revisited anything from it since i heard it who's that girl (laughs) but here's the cool thing though so um what's the show called um this is us is on netflix right now so me and Pressure, we've been watching it when we get free time. And um, I didn't realize that Loudon is Uncle Nicky. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's crazy. Okay, that blew my mind. Like, wow. Oh. All right, cool. Um, coming in at number seven, Like a Prayer. Um, I feel like Like a Prayer, basically, it's an interesting album to me. Um and just looking at like Madonna's trajectory right now, because I feel like Like a Prayer is an album that Madonna, I feel like it's like two eras within Like a Prayer. It's like that one era of Madonna wanting to be like this earthy, kind of like getting back to her roots, right? She let her hair be brunette, right? Um, but it was kind of like, we know the Pepsi deal, the controversy of Like a Prayer, the video. But it was that Shep remix, right? Um, um, Especially yourself. That really, I feel like, made late the foundation to the Madonna of the 90s up until this point that we're seeing right, even to right now, right? Like, I feel like Express Yourself, that remix changed everything for Madonna in, in the direction that she was going in, I feel like. Some good songs on that album, but really not an album I have really revisited again since listening to it. Uh, let's see. Erotica. Um, more contemporary than Like a Prayer for me, for the most part, because again, the Shep remixes wasn't on the actual album, which I think was a crime. Um, <laughs> but Erotica... A little bit more contemporary. Um, ironic of the song, I, I like, right? Still my favorite off the whole album. Um, yeah. <laughs> True Blue. Mm, 
Hmm, I put true blue before erotica. Why did I do that? Let me let me think. Let me think. True blue before erotica. We might change this in real time. True blue before erotica. Is this actual factual? I mean, because erotica is just living off of erotic for me. <laughs> and rain, it's like rain is rain was a good summer. It's a song that I could kind of live without if I never heard it, honestly. Cause it really didn't sound like a Madonna song to me. Um True Blue, what we got. Title track, I never liked it, period. Uh, Papa Don't Preach. Ah, that's why. Still this day, I feel like one of Madonna's strongest vocal recordings, period. I think she did a phenomenal job of convincing the listener, being the character. Like, she did a great job, I feel like, on Papa Don't Preach alone. Yeah, I just feel like that Papa Don't Preach performance is going to trump. Erotic. So, we'll keep True Blue right there for right now. I might think about this later. <laughs> like a virgin. Okay, so granted, like a virgin, I feel like is Madonna's most dated album. But I mean, it had the most, some of the most memorable songs out there. You, you got Firebox, Like a Virgin, right? Title track, um, the iconic, even though I still never really liked the song, Material Girl. Um, what you got? Just me up in my all over your body, right? I mean, it's some songs, Angel, right? I just mentioned, it's some songs from Virgin. I, I got on the playlist, and I, I already listened to it. So, Virgin, boom, I'm going to keep that number four. Um, I'm breathless. Might be a surprise. But, again, um, just thinking about what was done I had to pull off for her to be, like, making these songs that sounded, like, authentic of the times of like what the late 20s early 30s um I think she killed this just like with Papa Don't Preach like I, I feel like she convincingly pulled it off great songs right something to remember great tort song I feel like um great performance as well um and also I mean Vogue was on this album again <laughs> like the song that really I feel like is solidify who Madonna was for the 90s. Madonna did not have to drop another track after Vogue, and she would still, I think, been just as iconic as she is today. So, I'm roughly stage. Uh, two. The album we just been reviewing, Bedtime Stories. Yeah, so, for me, Bedtime Stories, six strong songs. Six. I mess with them. Um, but those other, what, about four or five? Uh... They could have, I think they weakened the album, right? Mm, so for that reason, E3 still reigns supreme. And I feel like, you know, y'all make me a little sad because y'all like, oh, Madonna vocals is about to change drastically. And one of the things about early Madonna, I used to always say it, go back and watch those early videos, especially those early interviews. I'd be like, Man, you could just feel her energy. And like, I feel like that 83 album, you just feel all of her energy, right? You feel all of the, I got to make it. I'm excited to be in the studio. I'm having love st struggles, right? Like you feel it, all these kind of young adult emotions and you just can't fake that. So for me, 83 still number one, but we still on the quest to see, I don't know, well, the next album replace 83 who knows we shall see but until then y'all know what to do drop the comments down below i want to hear what y'all records are up until this point album video song um also y'all already know rewatch the playlist y'all like i literally been doing this now for what almost about three years we've been on this journey started with demos right when madonna's with the breakfast club so for those of y'all who new to this Go back and watch some of those videos. Let's let's let the journey continue. So I think next we have um what the something to remember album and um the be the movie, right? All right, yeah. So if that's wrong, I know y'all gonna tell me otherwise. <laughs> All right, guys, but hey, we almost put an hour together. I love you guys. I'm still having fun, exploring, learning who Madonna the artist is. Love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. <laughs>